Hey everyone, I'm okay, so today I want to share this quick little video with you because I find it quite helpful, or I have found it quite helpful, when g purchasing skincare products. Now, if like me, you're concerned about size, I don't know what you're thinking, but with regards to skincare, it, let's just say, just as a general example, you want to buy this amazing skincare product and it's so expensive. Let's just say it's $200, it's really expensive and it contains 30 mils of product. Nowhere on the packaging does it say how much in this bottle, so how long it's gonna last. And that's a problem because you might be able to justify that if it lasted a year, but if it only lasted a month, it's a big problem because who can afford that? It's ridiculous. So what I did was, so let's just say that most products are 30 mils, okay, for skincare. Now, what I did was get a little spoon. Now, I had the spoon here, and now I've put it down and I can't find it. Um, but it's like you'd need a tiny little spoon. And what I did was I pumped out enough so that it filled 0.5 of a mil, so half a mil. And that was basically enough to cover my entire face. In fact, it was actually a little bit too much for the majority of things. So generally speaking, it's about 0.4 mils for somebody's face size of mine. So generally speaking, a 30 ml bottle of moisturizer or serum will last you just over two months or so. Now another way to make products go further, which is what I do, is after I've washed my face, I spray myself with water or I, or I just sort of tap it gently with a towel so that there's still water on my face. Then I apply the, plot of the product and it spreads more easily, it goes farther and it also helps to lock in the moisture. So that's another one. So here's a good example. So this is what I use on myself as an exfoliant. So this is the Neostrata and it's Bionic Lotion and it is a 15 pHa, so polyhydroxy acid. I find them less irritating. Now this is about 39 pounds. It contains 200 mils. This lasts me a year. That's all I need to buy for exfoliants. But when it comes to other things like sunscreen, you need about one mil for your face or just over if you're gonna include your neck and ears, which you should anyway. So like Drunk Elephant, as an example, this will last me three, I hope you saw that fly, he's still here. That's three months in there. So you can get the idea. When it comes to things like oils, I think it's a really big mistake to put them in the palm of our hand and then do this because we're getting the benefit really on the palm. I like to just take the dropper and literally just go one, two, three. You know, I'm not wearing jeans and this drop of oil has gone straight on my tinkle. So that's how I do it. Because you don't want it on your palms, right? Because you know, really, I've got such young looking palms, who cares? But that's how I like to think of it because I'm not gonna spend huge amounts of money on skincare if I know that this $300, $200, 50 pounds, 60 pound product is gonna last me a month. That pisses me off because I'm not spending 60, 80, 100 pounds a month on skincare unless it's gonna work a miracle and we know they don't. We know that exfoliants work and we know that retinol products work and prescription strength, Retin-A, or azelaic acid, whatever, those things work. The rest, you're just gonna clean your skin with it and make and add some antioxidants and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, most things don't work the way they claim because if they did, they'd be on prescription and they'd be a drug. So that's how to work it out. Just remember, approximately half a mil is what you need for a whole face. And I like to keep my skincare very, very simple. So in the day, I literally, literally just use sunscreen, wash my face, use sunscreen, that's it. I keep my skincare for the night, which is when I wash my face, I will use an exfoliant. Then I will use um, a retinol, a retin-A, or azelaic acid. Then I'll put an oil over the top of that, that's it. My skincare routine is really quite cheap when you look at it over longevity. Sometimes I use a serum if my skin's feeling a bit dry, because I'm getting older and my skin it's still really combination, but sometimes I really like to layer on the moisture at night because I know the products that I use aren't gonna cause breakouts. But there you go, that's how I work it out. 0.5 mils, so just think, anything with 30 mils, you've got just over two months or so. G general rule, because I know that there's some of you out there going, it lasts me longer, and then there'll be some going, it doesn't last me that long. General rule, approximately two months or so, 50 mils, 
working out that way is much simpler. With regards to cleansers, um, I quite like Philosophy's um, cleanser, you know, the Philosophy one. Now, I got it in a massive, do you want to see it? Here it is. I got two of these massive ones, so 946 mils each. Came in two, I got it from QVC, which I hate ordering from because they just don't do next day shipping. I like that, so, but two of these. This is over a year for those two, well over a year. And philosophy, in fact, this is probably a year because philosophy, you need such a small amount. Some cleansers, you definitely need more. The only other thing to think about is with the cleansing oil, if you need that, but we'll talk about that in another skincare video. But that's it, that's how I work out whether or not I'm gonna buy a product for skincare and I'm really pissy about skincare. Cleanse, exfoliate, treat. I'm pissy about it because my skin, as I got older, really, really dislikes a lot of products. So I keep things very, very simple. Stick to brands I like, Neostrata, um, Drunk Elephant, Paula's Choice. I really stick to the ones that I know work for me. And you know, this is a year, 39 quid. In fact, you can get one that's not, uh, 20 pounds, which is an AHA, 10% AHA, 20 quid. That's a whole year. That's a whole year of your exfoliating needs if you use it once a day. That's a lot of product for not much money. That's pretty cool. Anyway, some links and information on the description down there. And I'll see you all next time. Bit coming next. Bye-bye. Um, okay, so I wanted to do this bit at the end because it's something that I've been meaning to talk about for a while and just haven't got around to it. A couple of, not a couple of weeks ago, probably about a month or so ago, I posted a picture on Instagram and it was of, um, it was like an eyeliner that was liquid that goes into your waterline. And obviously I'm a makeup artist, so I enjoy makeup things. And I posted this picture and somebody really, really lovely messaged me and was like, have you seen what's going on in your feed? So I have a look at my feed and it is comment after comment after comment going, I can't believe you support this brand. I can't believe that you're posting this picture. So I'm not sure if you're aware of this about me, but how often do you see me on social media commenting on other people's threads or Twitter or anything about anything gossip related? I never do. I don't pay any attention to it. So when I post something, I know nothing about what is going on in the world. And I've spoken about this before in terms of the news and things. I don't watch the news. I don't buy newspapers. It's my personal preference. I don't enjoy anything negative. Um, about 20 years ago, there was a, and I've never forgot it, about 20 years ago, there was a, I heard something on the news and it was to do with a, a small, uh, a young boy who had been decapitated due to ritualistic killing. And it upset me so much that I thought, I'm never gonna watch the news again, or, or read it, or I'm gonna avoid it. Now, does that mean my head's in the sand? It certainly does, but I prefer it that way. My natural, um, I'm not a happy-go-lucky person in general, I'm always a little bit melancholy and those kind of things affect me and they make me down. So by choosing to not listen to news and depressing things helps me stay more balanced. So when I post something, I don't know what's going on with that person or their views or anything they've said or done in the past. I'm just posting a comment, uh, posting something on makeup and I choose not to look, I choose not to do that because as everything I've just said, and I, I did it again yesterday. I posted a picture, completely normal, harmless picture, this new product that's come. I bought it and I'm testing it out and so far it's been amazing. And then it was like, do you see what this person said about this influencer? No, I didn't. I didn't see. I never see because I don't look. I choose not to be a part of anything to do with any of that. And if that means that I'm posting things sometimes, then you know that I'm posting it without a malicious intent you know I don't know anything about it and I like it that way. And also, say you've got a friend, really good friend of yours, lovely person to you, and you've got another friend who hates that friend. They, they just hate them. They spoke to them really, really poorly. But your friend's always been lovely to you. So does that mean you should stop speaking to your friend because your other friend had a problem with them? Of course not. The thing is, we all do stuff, we all say stuff, that we wish we could take back, then we apologize for it. And that's the funny thing sometimes is when you do apologize for it, it's like people forget the apology, I didn't hear that. So it's, 
just understand that when I post something, I'm posting it blind. I'm just talking about the product, not the person, not their beliefs, not their views. I don't know anything about it. And that's the truth. I saw a little bit on the blurb. I thought, and that was it. I didn't delete the picture because it was an innocent picture. That's why you, I'm going into it innocent. Lashes. Lashes are good. I don't know the person behind it or the brand or their belief systems or whether they are racist or homophobic or whatever they may be. I don't know anything about it regards to anything because I like to just keep my head down, stay where I am. And also, if somebody has been negative, if a company has been negative to this influencer, just as an example, um, but, but they've always been nice to me. What do you do? They've always been respectful to me. They've always been kind to me. They've always been, you know, I think that influencers in general, we're very precious things. And God forbid somebody say something about us that's negative. But oftentimes we're saying really, really hideous shit, especially on social media and Twitter. But we forget all the things we've said, but then we're really happy to post the things that a company may have said about us because a company should know better but an influencer shouldn't. It's like so bizarre. We all make mistakes. I've made mistakes on social media and I've talked about it before. The biggest one I made, um, and I'll say it to you again, was about three or four years ago and it was to do with Tom Ford um, blushes, these new ones that were coming out. I was so excited to get them. And I bought them in, in Cardiff and the PR had already said to me, way back when, we're gonna send you these. And of course they sent them all out and I didn't get them, which is fine. I don't deserve them, but it's fine. And what I did was I posted on Instagram, me and this blusher, and I just bought them. And I was like, what on earth is it gonna take for Tom Ford PR to send me something? And it was meant to come off sarcastically, but there is no tone, there is no eye movements, there is no nothing on Instagram, it's just words. And it came across as if saying, I am very special, why did they not, send me this stuff for free, I deserve this, which wasn't my intention, but that's how it came across. And it was, and I could see how that came across immediately. And I deleted it because I was horrified that that's what people think. And then somebody who was, and I've never ever said their name, but who has the same business as me, um, put a picture up of me and it had the word fraud written all over it. And she wrote this really big long piece. She said she didn't create the picture, another, celebrity makeup artist did um, and she reposted it apparently and wrote this really long thing saying how I get everything for free and I did a video um, on it at the end of something and showed every single receipt, proper receipts, not the here's the receipts, proper receipts for all the makeup I bought that month. So you could see I wasn't getting all this stuff for free at all. So it was a complete lie. But she was just very, very angry that I posted that. And I can see why it would piss people off. And I didn't mean it to come across that way. So we all say things and do things that we regret and we wish we could take back. And influencers are no different, but we're very precious. So the moment a company criticizes us, we go for them, despite the fact that we don't have clean hands to begin with, because we've been all over Twitter or Instagram or wherever. So there you go, that's my thoughts. I'm going into things blind. I don't know about what's going on and I like it that way. I want no part of any gossip, any drama, anything. And also I don't follow those people. I follow, well, not those people because it's just no interest to me. I'm sure they're all lovely. Just, you know, I deal with makeup every day. Don't necessarily want to read about people's personal lives as well behind the makeup, unless it's Ray Morris, Charlotte Tilbury, Mary Greenwell, those kind of people. Okay, thanks so much. Bye-bye.